a great book. Anything and everything that you wanted to know and more is in this book. Um, it's got a lot of knowledge in the book. Um, even though there are a lot of books out there on the prophetic, but very few people teach on prophetic definitions. Yes, there is such a thing as prophetic definitions. This is why you need to get the book. I list in here about 15 different definitions. And I'm going to just give you one. Prophetic vacuum. That's where a prophet is in a church and he sits there in the pew and you've got a prophetic word to say in a church but the leader does not allow you to speak so you feel like a vacuum you feel like you're just you got all this stuff all the, these words these prophetic words that are on the inside of you but you can't release it I give the different prophetic definitions Prophetic colors, symbols, signs, um, prophetic dance, prophetic worship, prophetic scribes, what it means to, to prophetically write, spontaneous sing, and to do directing in the prophetic. Yes, you can direct movies in the prophetic. All of that and more, I guarantee you, there's nothing quite like this book that's out there embracing your prophetic gifts you don't want to miss this you want to get your copy on my website go to n i n his h i s anointing a n o i n t i n g global g l o b a l ministries m i n i s t r i e s dot com $15, that's all it costs, $15, invest in yourself, there is so much knowledge in this book, glory to God, and there's free shipping, in his anointing, globalministries.com, you don't want to miss this fabulous book, amen, glory to God, pick up your copy, and I'll mail it right out to you. And they're going fast. Really, they are. They're going fast. This is a great book. My latest book, Embracing Your Prophetic Gifts. Glory to God. So we're going to go ahead and um, get into tonight's lesson. Again, start sharing on Periscope so people can hear about um, these different bewitching spirits. That's the title. Bewitching spirits. And this is still... Um, on the lesson of prayer, I think we're in our third or fourth lesson here that I've been teaching on, on prayer. And um, a lot of times people say, well, what does these spirits have to do with prayer? Well, it has everything to do with prayer because when you come together and you pray corporately or even when you're by yourself, uh, but I'll just speak of corporately, uh, things begin to manifest and you need to know um, what's manifesting in front of you. It may be a friend. It may be someone sitting in a church. It may even be your prayer partner. You need to know about these bewitching spirits. And it's time for the church. To, to, to mature, to get the knowledge that it needs. Amen? You need this knowledge. And so does the other church. There's so much mess that is going on today. And we're saying that it's God. And in God, ain't nowhere in it. So turn your Bibles, if you will, to 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Beloved, hear that. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone into the world. So because there have been so many false prophets, false teachers, false apostles, whatever, have gone out into the world, you need the gift of discernment. Discernment is being able to know good from evil. When God is truly giving you the gift of discernment, you are able to see things differently than everybody else. Quite frankly, people may think you're strange or out of your mind because you're seeing something in a celebrity. You're seeing something in a leader. You're seeing something um, in, a, in, your, in, your, in your family that nobody else sees because what they see is the outer appearance. 
That's what they see. They see the outer appearance, but they're not looking behind and beyond what? The spirit realm. So in the gift of discernment, you're able to discern certain things. So you may say, let's just make up a name. Betsy Ann has a Jezebel spirit. And someone would say, no, she doesn't. She's got the fruit of the spirit. She's always giving. She's always kind. What are you talking about? So then you start doubting yourself. Stop doubting yourself. Pay attention. Be aware. If God has truly given you the gift of discernment, let it be an operation as he wills. Amen. Just because somebody else doesn't see it, that don't mean you don't have the gift. The gift of discernment is different than a prophetic gift. Someone could be a prophet, which is an office. Amen. But it doesn't mean that that prophet, oh, glory to God. It doesn't mean that prophet has discernment. So you can even tell a prophet, hear this, you can even tell a prophet that, that you see a certain spirit in someone and they wouldn't believe you because they don't have a gift. It's a different gift. Are you hearing me? Value and treasure your gifts. If you believe you are seeing, if you believe you are hearing, pay attention. Stop doubting yourself. Amen. Galatians 3, 1 says, oh, foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? Mm. So the Galatian church, if you will, started out in the spirit. You hear that? They started out in the spirit and then they ended up where they ended up in human effort, human, e human effort. There is an error there. Are you hearing me? There are spirits that will show up. A false spirit. A familiar spirit. Human effort is doing everything in your own will. What I want. What I need to do. And you're not what? You're simply not led by the spirit of the living God. Human effort says, I hear God, but I'm going to go ahead and do my program. I'm going to do here, go ahead and do what I want to do. So this is why the church today is full of error. And until we can put the apostles, the prophets, the, uh, the, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers back the way God has designed. Amen. The way the spirit has designed. We're going to be in error. But God is putting his church right now and has been in order. Amen. Because all of what? This humanism. Human effort. Glory to God. Now watch this. Write this down. The Greek word for bewitched is baskino, which simply means to confuse you. It means to uh, observe. It means glory to God. It means to follow an evil doctrine. And that's what happened to the Galatians. Are you hearing me? They started following an evil doctrine. They started following an evil doctrine can even be your own will. Are you hearing me? This is why we need the gift of discernment. The Hebrew word for discernment is nakar, which simply means to pay attention, means to discern between good and evil. It means to wake up church, observe. And I'm going to take it a little further. Observe even your surroundings. What's around you? Okay? Start observing. When the spirit... It's showing you something. Pick up. Don't, don't throw it down. Pick it up and, ob and observe what he's saying. What did I say? Stop following the majority. Okay? I don't care if thousands of people are following somebody. Stop following the majority. Don't get caught up in a bewitching spirit. Are you hearing me? Watch out. The Bible says, watch this, in 2 Timothy 3.5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Hear this. From such people, he says, what? Turn away. Turn away. Why is it that the church is not turning away from people who have a religious spirit, a bewitching spirit? When we see someone is gossiping or slandering somebody, we're, we're sitting right there at the table with them, listening. Amen. And, and paying attention to everything that they're saying. And you, you may even throw your word, throw a word in now and then too. The Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. 
You've got to learn to start separating yourself from bad company. I didn't say that you shouldn't say hi. You shouldn't be uh, polite. But here's an oldie but goodie. If they're gossiping and slandering someone else, you better believe they're going to do it about you. Amen? So when you have um, the, the, the corruption going on, and, and, and Satan is seeing all this, watch this. He has three strategies that he uses. Intimidation, manipulation, and what? Domination. And I sum all that up and I call it what? I call it the Jezebel spirit. This is how Jezebel operates. She loves, or he, loves to intimidate, dominate, control any and everybody. And loves to be the center of attention. All eyes, all eyes on me. Look at me, everybody. Hear me, everybody. It's all about me. I'm the important one. Hello, I'm the one that's a God complex, the worship of I, a bewitching spirit. And this is what the, what the, what the, the body of Christ is full of today, bewitching spirits, because no one is bothering to cast these spirits out. Are you hearing me? So the Jezebel spirit, her, her, the Jezebel, the, the, the name Jezebel means without habitation. Without dwelling. It's the worship of self-will. So if the spirit itself cannot kill you physically, it's going to kill you spiritually. You have to watch out how people pray. Now, you better believe. Let me, let me, let me talk. Okay? You better watch how people pray. Listen to how they pray. Listen to their words. When people are simply praying, uh, Lord, let that person have insomnia. Let that person lose sleep. There's something wrong with that person. They need to be taught. You don't curse somebody. You don't uh, put, put a hex on somebody with words. If you're not sleeping at night, it may be because someone is praying that about you, against you. Amen. I want you, when we get off of here tonight, start, start breaking. Mm, thank you, Holy Spirit. You better start breaking tonight. Word curses off of your life. Are you hearing me? Whatever the spirit brings to your spirit, break it. Negative words, negative comments, envy. Jealousy. Oh, I wish that they, they would lose everything they have so I can have it. All of this mess that goes on in the body of Christ. When, when, when we got to go to the Father and say, God, I, I've got something on the inside of me. I need you to fix it. I can't fix it. But I need you to help me fix it. We got to get to the point where we stop pointing the finger at everybody else. And we look at what? Self. Don't try to fix somebody else until you what? Fix yourself. Amen? You can't go cast out of a spirit out of someone when you got one in you. Okay? That's hard to do. How come Beelzebub cast out Beelzebub? Hello, somebody. Watch this. Matthew 7, 20 says, Therefore, by their fruits, you will what? He says, you will know them. Watch their character. Watch their fruit. I don't care how well they preach, how well they dance, how well they sing. I don't care. Watch it. If you're not thinking straight, if you're not seeing straight, there may be a reason for it. Maybe it's something or, or whomever you're hanging around. When you hang around a bunch of negativity, guess what? That negativity is going to get inside of you. It's going to affect you. You don't want that stuff to eat out, eat, eat at you. Are you hearing me, church? You don't want it to eat you. You don't want to be decayed. You don't want to be rotted. You want, your, you want to have what? A glorified body. 
Amen. That's what we want. That's what we need. We need a glorified body. Are you hearing me? So Jezebels are what? Jezebels are great liars.